Hi, this is Dr. John Martinez, Medical Director with Coastal Sports and Wellness Medical Center in San Diego, California. Today we'll be talking about some myths and facts about blood lactate testing as it applies to our endurance app. We talk about the lactic acid myth, the muscle burn myth from lactic acid, the muscle pain myth, and finally the lactic threshold myth. Now the first myth is lactic acid and that lactic acid actually appears during exercise and what's really the the true thing is it's more of a misnomer and that lactate is actually a proper term and it's actually a byproduct of glucose utilization and a lot of coaches and athletes you know are taught or are told that that lactic acid is something that's actually bad when in fact that if we look at the whole breakdown of exercise metabolism is that as glucose breaks down it's broken down into to a byproduct called pyruvate and eventually into a pathway that produces lactate. Uh, there may be some true lactic acid that's formed very briefly, but then lactate's actually a, a salt byproduct that's produced. And importantly for athletes and coaches understand that lactate's actually used by the body, specifically the brain and the heart, for fuel. And this falls into a concept term the lactate shuttle that was first proposed by Dr. George Brooks up at University of California Berkeley who's done a lot of research on on this concept. The next myth that we're going to talk about is that muscle burn myth and this is something that I think most athletes have been told if you've ever been in a spin class ever gone out to the track and done a track workout or a speed workout you're told that that burn is that lactic acid building up and again if you go back to that first myth that we already talked about the true term we should be using is lactate but yeah that's actually a falsehood that lactic acid buildup causes that muscle burn that athletes experience at the high intensity exercise the fact is that that muscle burn is actually more of an acidosis that occurs from hydrogen ion buildup and probably some other byproducts from the intense exercise lactate itself doesn't seem to cause that muscle burn and if you look at the research studies we have athletes that have much different levels of blood lactate levels that have different experiences or different complaints as far as how much muscle burn or muscle uh, discomfort they're in so again that lactic acid or that lactate buildup doesn't cause that muscle burn that we're the third myth we'll be talking about is the muscle pain myth and that lactate or lactic acid buildup causes the muscle pain most athletes experience 24 to 40 hours after a hard workout. Well the truth is that lactate is actually cleared from the muscles usually within an hour of most exercise even the more high intensity exercises. And we know this because when we do a lactate testing on our athletes we plot out the increase in the lactate levels as we increase the exercise intensity. And then as we have our recovery period after exercise, we actually do a recovery lactate uh, test to watch how quickly the, the athlete's body is able to metabolize that excess lactate. So the truth is that a lot of that muscle damage and muscle pain that occurs 24 to 48 hours is actually probably due more to micro tearing. And usually we see more muscle pain and more micro tears when there's more of an eccentric muscle contraction. And this would be something as far as, you know, downhill running and the eccentric lengthening of the quadricep muscle or if you're in the gym doing a bicep curl this would be the the negative that a lot of bodybuilders do where they slowly extend out the bicep under a heavy weight and you get more micro tearing and therefore more inflammation and damage to the muscle and that's what we think the delayed onset muscle soreness is that occurs a couple days after a hard workout the final myth we'll talk about is a lactic threshold myth and that myth is that there's a defined point where the body switches from an aerobic to anaerobic metabolism called the lactate threshold. Well the truth is that there's really no defined switch from an aerobic to anaerobic metabolism and there's actually more of a mixture of aerobic and anaerobic metabolism at most exercise intensities and if you think about this at a lower intensity you do use mostly fat as your main source of energy but there's always just a little bit of glucose metabolism that's occurring and as you slowly increase your exercise intensity there's more of a slow transformation or slow transition to a more heavily anaerobic metabolism but there's no true flip of the switch where you go completely aerobic to completely anaerobic it's more of a um, transition zone that we hit 
one of the things that we try to measure with our athletes is what we call the maximum lactate steady state, which is that steady state exercise level for either running or cycling where the athlete can maintain a constant lactate production and lactate metabolism. And that's probably the level that most athletes can race a long distance, race at over an hour. Well, that was just a few blood lactate myths. If you like to find out more about lactate, go to our website at coastalsports.com.